Hello and welcome to Week Turning at Home with me, Paul Finlay. How you doing, guys? Hope you're all having a, a great afternoon. Uh, thanks for coming over and, and enjoying me and in, in the shade and uh, seeing what I'm going up to today. Uh, I'm just going to let Doug in here. He's there somewhere. So we have Pete from Twisted Trees and we have Doug Miller. And Hi everyone. Air warming. Hello. And there's Doug rushing in with his tea. <laughs> Coffee. Hi, Doug. <laughs> Coffee. Hi, Doug. So, guys, welcome very much for helping me out with the air woman today. So, I'll get straight into it, and uh, they can tell me who's in and any questions they want to put to me. Okay. So, the subject of the day's uh, piece. I'm going to turn a platter, right, and I'm going to do a bit of ink marbling on it. And I'm just going to change over the overhead here. I've had a wee play around, and you could do this on anything. It could be a wee small bowl, decorate the rim. It could be a little of a box. Uh, you get all some lovely designs. I even turned a wee Christmas tree and dipped that in. And you can see it came out okay. I also came across uh, a dot of box. I've done this wee box the other day and uh, decided to put a wee lid in it and just decorate the, the top of it. Uh, so that's what you can, you can expect from it, but it's up to you. You're the artist in control. So what do we have today? So. <laughs> This is our blank. It's a pit of poplar. Okay, so I have went ahead and prepped it. Uh, I didn't do this in the first one I done. Okay, and you'll see that later. This is the the one for dunking in the, the paint. Uh, obviously, you have to wait for this to dry overnight uh, to let uh, you turn it and uh, put your border and work all that out. So we want to be dipping that. So what do we dip it into? We'll get that turkey tray out, guys. <laughs> do a bit of turkey oh, cooking. All right. So where's my gloopy stuff? Now, there's a bit of, I was saying to Pete, there's a bit of controversy on how to do this and what works and what doesn't. So I first came across this about five years ago. And uh, I sent away from uh, a wee uh, small uh, kit, and they sent me uh, five sachets of floater powder and a couple of wee pipettes. <coughs> uh, uh, <coughs> looking for the pipettes. Uh, see, when I mention something, can I lay my hands on it? No. Anyway, it doesn't matter. <coughs> you only need it if you're going to. Uh, put your colors on the wee pot and then you can use a wee pipette to drop the water in or the colors in. So uh, some people say just ordinary top water, put it in the, your your tray and drop your colors onto it. I tried that and it didn't work. I tried it again in case I'd done something wrong and it didn't work. And all I got was a big dirty mess and in the, the tray, just like like dirty water. The paints just went all over the place. So I researched more on YouTube, as you do, and I came, I went to marblingforfun.net. This is where I got this. Uh, and I watched a couple of his videos and they, they uh, do the kits and stuff for all that. And you can do it with a, uh, any acrylics, and I don't think, I think it should work with uh, any metallics too. Uh, it's something I'm gonna have to try. So I managed to get the water sorted out. It's just, so you mix the size of up with two liters of water and you pour your water into your tray. You can see that's nice and 
gloopy looking thick. You don't want it too thick. So just cover the base of the tray. Okay. Now you can reuse this and it'll keep up the three months in the container. And the way you go about it is to reuse it again. You drop a piece of paper on it and clean off the ink. The ink will attach itself to the paper and just keep doing it until you get a clear tray again and then put it back in the vessel. So it could, it could last you a wee while. If you're mixing something up and going to do a bit of marbling, get a couple of projects and you can do them all together and uh, you can uh, use the same tray and all. So I purchased, purchased, purchased these magic colors, liquid acrylic colors from Hobby, uh, Hobby Craft at the weekend. And uh, they're just acrylic paints. Uh, so I'm just looking at this because there's a wee, the way this boat, this tray sitting, there's a wee bit of a, a fall in it. I want to just level it up. You see that? Okay, yeah. Yeah. Right. So you get your colors. Give them a good shake. And I like these wee bottles because there's a wee uh, sponge thing for, it's like a wee pat pat and you can squeeze it in and lift the paint. Um, we're just going to put some drops. And that's all you need to put in. You don't need to put a whole lot in. So I'm going to use maybe four colors. It's up to you how many colors you want to use. And as I, I tried this a couple of years ago and then just left it. I uh, didn't think any more about it until uh, middle of last week and I came across a video and I watched it. So there's no right and wrong way of putting your colors in. Uh, just put them in and uh, let them sit there and they will disperse. Try to put your ink colors into the center of the previous color uh, and then they will disperse out. Now some of the paints will, uh, let's see, blue, red, blue, green, blue. Right, I'll put a wee tasty orange in it and then we'll, we'll give that a wee, a wee stir. <clears throat> so how deep is the uh, liquid base under that roughly? Right. It's only about 10 mil. You don't need to submerge the whole thing into it. You're only submerging the face of the, the bowl or the platter, whatever you're working with. Obviously, if you're making a bowl and you want to submerge all the, do the whole rim, uh, the body of the bowl, you're going to have to go a wee bit deeper, more more liquid in your, yeah. in your uh, tray, obvious. So get yourself a wee stick. And the way they say to do it is just drag your stick through the colors and it will start to move the paint and the pattern. Now, this is only my about 10th try at this. And I, I did get some good success with it. Uh, on uh, the last couple of I done because I did have a couple of failures and it didn't look like much. So you just keep moving it until you are happy with it. You can go up and down, side to side. Can you see the streaks in that now? Nice rainbow colors. It's probably too bright maybe. So if you want to do a wee swirl, We swirl in a couple of places. Remember, you're putting your platter in this, this blue blank, so it's going more to the outside. So you want your pattern to be round about 
the outside of your bowl. Okay. So I'm not going to agitate that anymore. So I'll put these paints over out of the way. <laughs> and then you get your brown plank. Right. Why did I paint this white? I think you'll get a better effect of it. Uh, the bow blank I'm going to be turning today. I have already prepped that and it's all marbled and all and dry, ready for turning. So I thought I would show you this process of what you do. And on the, the piece I'm going to show you next, I just left the burr wood and you, obviously you need to seal the wood. And on the videos, it shows you some people masking the outside rim to stop the paint going down the side. So instead of me doing that, I just seal the edges uh, right around with sand sealer and give it a wee a light sand because uh, the sander sealer makes it a wee bit uh, uh, smooth and the paint won't stick to it. That happened to me. And what I had to do is dry it all off and rough it down with a sandpaper and then done, done it again and it worked okay. What grit so, did you use? 240. 240. So uh, I thought a wee bit of paint wouldn't do any harm on the background. It made show the colours up better. Uh, on the wooden, on the one I done last week, oh, I just go a rabbit. That's the one I done last week. Uh, you can see the natural wood showing through. Okay. So if you want to go down the road, you just leave. Don't don't paint it at all. It does work. So I'm trying this out for the first time, and I just noticed something. I need to put a screen in this the hole to get it into the tray. Bear with me, guys. <laughs> sure, how that's done. <clears throat> I don't know if I'm my, my drill bit there. Oh, oh, there's it there. I've got 29 uh, people watching at the moment. So. Many? 29. Oh, very good. Thank you guys for coming in. Uh, I'm just going to put a wee screw in this blank so that I have somewhere to hold it. Like so. Okay. So, obviously, I've put two uh, tannins on this so that I can uh, turn it around and finish one side. So, all you do is dip it in. Give it a wee twist. And there we That's are. That's cool. Very That's good. Cool. Okay. So just let the, the, the excess water run off a wee bit. Don't touch it or try to wipe it. Just let it sit. And what I done was just set them outside. And there's a couple of wee bubbles on that. Let's see if I can burst them. Uh, no, I think that's just the paint. That's all right, I'll, I'll be okay. So you can see the paints have now sunk to the bottom. So this is where your wee pat comes in. If you stick it down and press the wee sucker in and pull the paint back into the pat, you can bring it back to the surface. If you don't want to go down that route, you can put drop more paint into that and go again. As long as you don't disturb the bottom of that and make it all yucky looking, you'll get an R print, you know, as vibrant as that. So I'm gonna just set that outside, guys. Hold on, I set that out of the way. <clears throat> Jennifer said, wow, wow, wow. <laughs> She's impressed. Yeah, uh, it, it, it's pretty it's, neat. It's just something uh, you could incorporate into some uh, blank pieces <coughs> of wood that don't look very much. So I'm just gonna set this to the side. I will I try the best bet is to have a few blanks preps and yes, so you're so you're not wasting your your liquid, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we have our blank. I'm not going to show you the front yet. Keep you in suspense. We're going to start with our pro blank, and we're going to turn a platter out of this. So I have this side finished. Okay, uh, it's not turned. Just the, the ink on it. So I just wanted to show you the process of doing that. And you don't have to be an artist to do it. Uh, 
I just sent those out of the way as well. And I bring now obviously 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 you have a problem here. This is a thick piece of timber. So if you're wanting to do this uh, on the front or on say this is the front, you would normally take it down a wee bit and maybe slant it in towards the middle or so on. You can do that. I just left the flat on the face. So I'm going to take all my timber away from the back of it because I have no option now because this side's uh, painted and finished. So I'm just going to true up the blank again. And I'll just change cameras to so that you can see both. And that one's just went out again. Uh, where are you? There we are. Yep. Uh, okay, you can see my fin print, fingerprints and all. <laughs> so there's a bit of mess on here to clear it up. This will clean off, no problem. It hasn't weeped into the into the wood at all. So maybe it will blank or three it wherever it is. Uh, I'm just going to bring the tail stock up. Just because I can and it makes sense while you're doing a wee bit of roughing. So we'll just clean this up. Would you like me to read out who's in? Aye, right, go ahead. Well, first in was that Richard Feeling, who's supposed to be working, but he's skyving watching you at work. And then uh, Gerard, French Turner. And then Doug. Todd at Glencove Woodworks, Chris Dodds, Clint at Wood Dancers, Fred Gilliver, Andy Bundy Rowe under his um, <laughs> assumed name, Greg Alexander. Jennifer from Jennifer's Craft and Creations. Hey, Jennifer. Enjoyed your table earlier, Jennifer. That was nice. I still have to watch that. I'm going to watch it later. I was out this morning. I didn't get in time to get uh, to see Jennifer's uh Do you think uh, not? You're supposed to be prepping for this. Yeah. <laughs> so you can see that cleaned up quite nice. There's no bleeding from the front or what I want down to say, because I sealed it. Right, we're going to take all this timber away gradually uh, to form a nice curve for the, the platter. Uh, doing it this way, I don't have any options because I painted this side and can't take any more off the front of it. So I'm going to have to take most of it off the back. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Just going to use it. Uh... A drill cut or a pool cut. <clears throat> I'll just increase the speed a wee bit. So, thank you everybody for coming in. Pardon? Robert Brent Beecroft. Oh. Robert Broadwood. Um. Why have you woodshed? Got the bobs in. And door 60, I think that's it. Welcome yeah, along, everybody. I think you got them all, Pete. <clears throat> Robert Bort would say that I'm about to try some colouring with chestnut iridescent paint. Would it be better what? to paint straight onto the wood? Or would it be better to, to black the surface first? I didn't get all that, Pete. Sorry. I turned the leaves off because it was making a racket. Uh, Robert Bortwood, um, 
Back to Tresem Curran with chestnut iridescent paints. Should he black the wood first or paint straight onto the timber? No, you need the black in it. Using iridescence, uh, they're some, sort of similar to Joe Sonia's. Yes, you will have to blacken the yeah. the blank to get the colours to come through. Uh, I have seen some uh, pieces done with the chestnut, and they're not as vibrant as the Joe Sonia's. That's the only thing I would say about them. I think a, a Joe Sonia's is a better product. For color ways, color is very vibrant and it comes through better, I think. But yes, you do not need to blacken your piece first. Roger Kent has just joined us. Hi, Roger. Uh, Spider Spit is in. in Hi, in. Spider. What I've seen of the difference between the two paints is that, uh, uh, you know, I kind of agree with Paul that it's they're just different paints, really. Uh, the chestnut is a nice product. It's just not the same stuff as what the Joe Sonia is. Joe, I've got to leave us. His uh, granddaughter's here for a first birthday. Yeah, he said that earlier. Sure. Sure, you heard. Maybe uh, you I'm able pretty to sure catch I remember you saying a couple of weeks ago that she just got born. So, her first birthday is. Um, wow. <laughs> Time flies. Yes, Joe, uh, Doug Miller has joined us. Yes, Jennifer, hello. <laughs> and, and while there's kind of a break in the action, let me apologize for when I first came in the, with the echo and all, I, I missed getting the uh, mute button on my YouTube. Yeah, okay. It sounded strange from my point of view. <laughs> yeah. We're just quite bringing this myself. down gradually. Obviously, we don't want it too deep at the back. Paul, did you leave the front side totally flat or is it slightly curved? Yeah, that's what I was saying, Doug. If you were going to paint, you could curve this in in the front, so it's running in at an angle in the face of it. I I chose to leave it uh, just flat and take okay. all the timber away from this side. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's you don't have an option when once you've painted that, you know. Right. Yeah, I was just wondering if you had, had uh, curved it before you started to paint. No, it or, okay. I didn't. I didn't go down that route yet. That's uh, next on my plan of testing. <laughs> Yeah, you know, test one thing at a time, and if it works, it works, and then move on. Sure. All right. Obviously, it's up to yourself how you think you want to leave the rim. Uh, I like it doing a wee bit more, and then we'll tidy this up and tidy up our foot, and we can get it turned around and get it sanded and stuff. We'll just curve this around a wee bit. So it's just not straight off the back. Let's 
see what that's like. Okay. There's a wee, wee ridge here, just. Okay, I think that'll do that. We'll get it sanded up. I'll just fix this tannin now where we have the opportunity. Just going to use the point off the screw chisel just to make that a bit more scooter. That's all that needs. So that was a quick. I want a link for the keratin, but all I'm getting is shampoos and stuff. Uh, go into. I'll give you the email. Uh, it's marbling for four number four fun at that net, and they do all marbling kits, and you can just buy the the powder on its own because I ordered some more of it uh, yesterday, and you can order. The, the, there's a it shows you for you no know, ban extras. You can buy extra bits. Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't buy the kit. Now, nah, the kit's quite. I think quite dear. If you're going to do paper, or if you're in the paper and stuff and making cards, that's all right. It comes with card or card paper. Uh, e bits, bits of cloth. You can do this in cloth, and it's a special solution. You can put on it to uh, use on clothes and stuff, but we're not going doing that route. <laughs> we're concentrating on a piece of wood. So I wanted to see really would it work on wood, and yes, I think I have good success with it, and it works works fine. So I'm just going to turn the dust extractor on here, and we'll sand this up. I think my drill battery's done. Those batteries just don't last forever, do they? That's better. Right. So I'm just sticking a link in now to the, uh, the powder that you use to thicken the water. Jennifer's just put in a great reminder for everybody. Put a, a thumbs up for Paul. Let him let him know that you appreciate it, but also let YouTube know that you appreciate it. Yep. This is to go and look to make sure I've done it. Yes, I have. I'm good. <laughs> if you're talking to me, guys, I I can't hear very well with this dust extractor on. So you need to shout out if you want. You're asking a question, okay? Yeah, we'll do. We're just chatting at the moment. Robert, our, our green bin is mine first for shavings. If any garden waste goes in it, it's only on, on the day it gets put out.
I've tried all sorts of ways of getting rid of my shavings in the early days, including talking to people down the local allotment, some people that got chickens, and nothing was reliable. So now the cows have taken it away and compost it. Job done. Yeah. I have chickens. We put some out in the chicken pen once in a while, but we found that straw works so much better. Yeah. So I typically compost mine as well. One thing I have learned over the years, Pete, and you may have found the same thing. If you'll put some, when you put some new shavings on the pile, if you'll throw some nitrogen fertilizer in there once in a while. It, it helps it to break down and become compost a little quicker. Yeah, it does take a while. If you've got um, particularly hardwood trees. Right. Um, You throw nitrogen in, you can throw uh, um, old fruit. Old fruit will help that to break down as well. All right. We used to live on the edge of a farm and had apple trees. So those apples that fell on the ground were typically no good. They The birds would get to them before we could. Yeah, you put them in that compost pile, and you talk about melting down a, a stack of shaving. My goodness, didn't last long. <laughs> Don't go out and buy apples to put on your compost pile, though. <laughs> no, too expensive these days. <laughs> well, our, our apple tree in the garden. We get a bumper crop one year and we get nothing the following year. Exactly. Um, and normally we pick off about half of the apples early on to get some more size into the remaining ones. Mm-hmm, right. But they've all come out whilst we're away. <laughs> They're just everywhere. Sure, sure. Six green bowls. Robert, that's a bunch of, of green turning this morning. Right. That's that noisy thing done with. I didn't <laughs> say what the wood was. It's a piece of poplar, American tulip wood. All right. <clears throat> Obviously, you could do it in any timber you want. Uh, I just picked up because it's more bland and there's a wee bit of feature in it, but there's not much. So I'll just play some sand and see there. Got some nice poplar in the storeroom at the moment. I uh, did some stair spindles. Poplar is my favourite for turning stair spindles because you don't get the knot thing you get with other stuff. Right. If you work in pine and you get a knot right where you want to do a bead or a cove, then it's a nuisance. Um, and... Uh, the customer only wanted four stair spindles, but she put me in this layer plank to uh, cut that off. I've got <laughs> quite a loss at the moment. The only thing I find about it is it's very dusty when you're sanding. Yeah. <clears throat> Looks nice with the that little bit of yeah moisture yeah. put on it. Yeah. And it's got a wee bit of like like rain at the side of there. Will that be cellulose sand and sealer using at the moment, yeah? Yeah, sand and sealer, cellulose, chestnut product. Uh, uh, I mix it 50 50 with thinners. So I just, yeah, I mix mine 50 50 as well. Yeah, mine starts off at 60-40, but I use the Libron, which is a little bit thicker. Right. Um, but then it's sort of uh, guesswork down the rest of the pot. Oh, Took a bit yeah. of oh. energy into it, feels right. So. Just give it a good coat. This is nice and dry and soak in well. Does the poplar that you all get is does it have a tendency to have uh, some dark green stripes in it? Yeah, I've had that. 
I mean, what we get is what you get. It doesn't grow here at all. Um, okay. Well, okay. it does in sort of garden plantations, but uh, it doesn't grow wild here. Okay. So most of what we get is imported. Mm -hmm. So, just a plan. We test the Yorkshire correct. I don't know what it's imported for, really, because it's, um, I mean, as I said, I love using it for stair spindles because it's easy to cut. Um, they're all going to get painted anyway. Yeah, and right. um, it's pretty much not free, so you, you can cut any shape you want into it. Yeah. Sure. I quite, um, like it. I quite like it for platters and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, because it's... Uh, it's a plain sort of piece of wood, and as you said, there's no knots on it. It's just a nice piece of timber to turn. Yeah, until the it's is, 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 uh, trim work. Um, but we have quite a lot of similar price timbers. And it's, well, beech is a good example. We have uh, a lot of beech over here, which mm -hmm. will make a nice trim. Yeah. Um, but they still import the popular, so there must be a particular reason that they actually put it on a ship and bring it over. Right. Yeah, it's one of our lower expense hardwoods for construction type of things, like spindles. Yeah. yeah. We've got a massive poplar tree right on the side of my house that someday is going to have to come down. That the, 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 your storerooms are going to be empty. Mm -hmm. So we're just removing any excess Yorkshire grip from the piece. And more or less, just keep doing it until it's, your paper is clear before you put your finish on. Dr. Bob is saying that the city parks take his shavings for mulch. I wonder, uh, Bob, you may or may not know, do they age those a while before they use them or do they just take them straight away and put them out? I've heard a lot of people say they need to age for a minimum of a year, even if the wood was dry. I don't know, I think there's a weed suppressor, it doesn't really matter because um, as they're breaking down, they actually steal nutrients out of the ground. But so if it's just on the top of the weed suppressant. Right. 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 Just to I have um, Nick Crystalline. I have previously supplied him to a guy who was putting just walking paths through his woodland. Mm -hmm. um, and he just puts them down there and Leaves them and they just kill the weeds off and keep the path fresh. Sure, sure. <clears throat> now, really, when you put uh, crystalline wax, you should give it a couple of minutes to dry up. But seeing as a demo, it's just go with it and. <laughs> yes, yeah, see, my system when I'm working is. Um, Whenever I put a wax or sanding sealer, it's time to go and make a cup of coffee. Which yeah, takes me 12 minutes. I think you would uh, be bored if I went for a coffee. <laughs> 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 See you later, guys. We're going to get a cup of tea. <laughs> yeah. Planted Wood Dancers is saying they use poplar for all their paint grade meal work. Um, they use 32,000 board feet of poplar last year. 32,000 yeah, board feet. That's, that's a lot of wash. A lot of timber. Yeah. Again, okay. it's, it's, it's a thing because it's just a you know, straight, straightish grained, easy to work piece of wood. So mm -hmm. that's brought that really up nice. Is. You can see the yeah, nice looks great. On that. Nice finish on it. Right. We're going to see my art piece on the RCA now.
what I have already done. For yeah, any user who are late in, you're going to have to go back and, and watch the start <laughs> to see how I got this. That looks really good. And that right. one's over just bare wood, isn't it? It's on the bare wood. You can see the woods coming through and here. And the, and that's all red. Now, <laughs> Depending on the many colours you use, I use red, orange, yellow, and a bit of blue on that, and there's only a wee bit of blue on it. So it all depends on how you put them in your bowl for dipping, and how much you agitate the the mixture by bringing your stylus to it, and making your shapes, and wee swirls and stuff, and move the colours. So if you wanted more blue over here, you would have to drop blue nearly all over it to get the uh, full effect. So there's no limit and a number of colors you can put on it. It's up to yourself. You know, it's it's just your canvas. You can work on it and uh, stop when you, you feel there's enough uh, colors in it. But sometimes less colors is the, the way to go. And uh, you can have too many and look too bright, you know. But I think that uh, color. So we we'll need to dis uh, decide where our. I had a pencil. Uh, the gremlins have been in again and left them a. Oh, there's it there. Left them a pencil. So we're going to cut it back to the natural wood here. Um, we're going to bring the border to about there. Okay. So we'll just mark that with uh, the parting tool. I solved my lost pencil problem. Pardon? That's how I solved my losing pencils problem. That's <laughs> when I bought pencils. I bought two packets. And I put one packet where I'll never find them again, which means the other packet I keep finding. <laughs> <coughs> Just wanna have a wee look at that. That's not bad. You better better tear out in that. We'll fix that in a wee minute. Uh, we'll fix it now, Paul. Before I take the bottom the center out of this. Ooh. So I'm just using a spingle guide to clean that edge up. Jennifer's got a question for you there, Paul. She asked how long. What's that? Go ahead. I was going to, uh, Jennifer's question, how long does it take the colors to dry, please? I leave it overnight. Now, uh, when I done this one, which I showed at the start, when I done that one, I left it for two hours. And I was able to go out and put a coat of sand sealer or uh, lacquer over that. That's had three coats of lacquer on it, you know. Uh, so it's, I, it's up to yourself. When it's dry, touch dry, you can, you can work on it. You know, you can put your, your finish on it. But I like, I just leave it overnight because uh, it's easier and then you don't have any mistakes, you know. Yes. Yeah, as I said earlier, it's probably best it's off. Batch it up, do a, do a few, and then give them plenty of time to dry before you need to work them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't want to be wasting your liquid. So I would get a couple of projects together and then dip them all in one. And then you can work on them at your leisure, you know. Uh, to say, you can reuse the liquid if you put a piece of paper in and lift the colors off the, the top of the surface. Uh, and again, with the, the ink sinking to the bottom, uh, you need to use a wee bit of pat to suck the ink up into it and then discard it. And, but if they're really sunk to the bottom and there's a whole lot of them, uh, there's, just throw it out. There's no point in keeping it and, and trying to uh, salvage for all it is. You know, uh, it's, not a, it's not a big expense, you know, to make an hour or two liters of this stuff you know it's 
I make it up in a milk carton, give it a good shake and leave it to sit overnight. The let it do its job. Uh, you need to leave it overnight. That's a must. Uh, so if you don't leave it overnight and just mix it and come back an hour later, it won't be the consistency that you need it for the float to paint on the top. You'll probably find your paint will just drop straight through. And you don't want to drop your paint from any height as it'll sink. You know, you want to drop them on virtually to the surface of it. And uh, when you're agitating with your, your restylus, uh, you want to do it as gentle as possible, not to disturb anything underneath, which is really sunk to the bottom. Uh, you may think the paint has totally disappeared, but <laughs> I can assure you it hasn't. See if you put a, a clear white piece of paper on top of it and you think it's clear and doesn't work out, the color just comes back on the, the piece of paper or on the piece. It's a, mm -hmm. amazing the way it works, you know. Like I, I'm sounding like an expert. I'm not, I'm not an expert. This is only maybe about ninth time or so doing it, you know. But so it's uh, a fun thing to play with. You get absolutely. You, it, you, you know, your your opportunities there to play with this. And uh, I watched one video, and the guy made wee flowers, and then he made wee hearts. But just bringing the stylus around it and uh, making a wee heart and then going across it and pull the, uh, the, the shape and it's, it's pulled the, the paint with it and made a wee heart, you know, and hmm. wee swirls and stuff. So you, you can do a lot with it. And uh, so we'll get on with this. We'll get our wool guys and we'll get this taken out. So this sort of goes well with a uh, hashtag wall art, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> this could be my piece. Very possibly, yeah. So we'll just take the center out of this. bit more speed that's just three bit slow Come around and pick the cut up. Just stop and have we we feel and we look. Still plenty of timber there. <clears throat> so there was, this is the only option uh, you have to decide. Do you do the front of it and taper it in a wee bit so it's not flat, and then paint it, or leave it flat as I did? Uh, there's no right and wrong with that. You can. Uh, it's your own decision.
just happen to have a Norway look and see what our depth is. Where's my ruler? So I'm trying to get a, an eye for it, maybe 20 mil. There's a good, good quarter of an inch you can come out of that. But I'm going to try the, the scraper to bring out round. I don't want to go to, I have to remember we're tapered in here. So there's plenty of wood is in the bottom. So I'll get my rhino scraper. I'm going to raise the two rest. If you're using a scraper and it's not negative to break, you'll need to use, or raise the two rest above center. Okay, but it handle up. Okay. Just bringing the wall or the side of this round with a scraper as well. So it's not going straight down, it's coming out in a curve. You can just see it there. It's just formed a nice curve out of the center. See if there's any wee bumps and lumps. There's a wee bit there, there's a wee bit. Okay, that's that. <coughs> so We'll sand this rim here, this wee bit. Uh, and then we'll sand this the inside of that. So we'll get rid of that. We'll get the noisy machine on again. Paul, do you mind if I put the link to my next live in? No, go ahead, Doug. Here's the link to my live tomorrow night, eight o'clock British time, three o'clock Eastern time. Yeah, well, it was like the riding or in the pub when you uh, did your exciting one the other day. Um, so are you going to do another exploding bowl for me? Uh, the plan is not to. <laughs> Talking about the apple ball, yeah, that one. Um, that was quite disappointing. I, I had a plan to to uh, save that one, and the plan fell apart. So that was my fault. Uh, we're still not sure why that bowl came up, <clears throat> came apart when it did, but it it surely did, didn't it? <laughs> uh, not caught up with it yet. I've just seen it on uh, Facebook while I was away. Mm, mm hmm. It's uh happens to us all at some point or another right i was right then done with the uh the abrasive grit or abrasive paste i was you know 30 seconds i'd be putting wax on it and it just it just let go yeah it was just unfortunate yeah you're yeah. almost finished <clears throat> yep need a little wax is all it needed Ah, uh, Dr. Bob has a great idea. 
for your own compost pile, just add the the dog poo. <laughs> that would add the the uh, nitrogen to it for sure. Just checking the the ingredient for any turret. There's not usually the a good sharp scraper will tidy it up. Yes, Chris, the best laid plans do tend to fall apart. Speaking of plans, Pete, you got anything coming up in the next uh, little bit? Um, no, I haven't got a lathe at the moment. I haven't got a lathe at the moment. No, I sold my lathe. Ah. Sold your lathe so you could afford the trip, huh? Yep. <laughs> What you gonna get? Uh, I'm gonna get a chair and take it missing. That's a sacred secret. Uh -huh. Ah. <laughs> All will be revealed in due course. Sure, sure. But there is a plan, right? Mm, yep, there's a plan. <laughs> right, I have just spent five pound fifty on. Um, the thickening powder. I didn't buy it from the link I put in earlier because it was ten pound plus five pound postage, and I object to paying five pound postage on a ten pound order. Mm. Um, especially when I know the actual cost of postage is less than that. Absolutely. So I bought it from Amazon. I uh, that's what I do. I usually go through Amazon. <coughs> I know um, it's free. <laughs> so I'm gonna put that link in. <clears throat> right, I'm going to play a taste of sand sealer to this. Just watch when you're playing your finish, uh, your sand sealer, that you don't hit the paint because it will lift it off. <clears throat> I, I have given that uh, three coats of lacquer uh, and sanded them back with uh, 400 lately, just to de nib them from the wee, wee bits. So I just realized I should have used the spray can of lacquer. I wonder. And Freddie and purposely bought two cans to do this. Of sand sealer, so it could spread on. Yeah, but Pete, Paul Hyten has a question for you there. Yeah, Paul, oh, it is a fabulous lathe. You can't go wrong with a 406. It's um, it served me well. I've got the extension on the end of it, which um, as I do mostly spindle work, that uh, is an important piece for me. Um, it's faultless. I, I tend to use mine mostly on a high speed belt, uh, high speed pulley rather. Um, it's got plenty of torque, it never let me let me down. Even coring, I'll do on the, the speed pulley rather than the, the torque pulley. But yeah, fabulous lathe. Just give it a wee touch up the sand sealer. Right, gonna be bit we taste the your secret on that in the sander. Rub that in.
if you go, go back through my videos, Paul, uh, a long time ago now, I had a 10 inch thick, 32 inch diameter piece of ash on the end of the 406. Mm. Um, I wouldn't recommend you do that too often, but it did it no problem. Um, couldn't get a speed much above 100, but um, <laughs> you got the patience. Yeah. The only thing I found is that when you when you turned it off, it was taking five minutes to sort of spinning. Yeah. The weight. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I had a big piece of monkey puzzle like that. It was sort of uh, 20, -ish, 20 inches thick, about, about uh, 18 inches wide. On this here, <laughs> it took forever. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, the way I had it set up at the time, I had to walk past the piece to get to the um, sharpening. So, um, but every 20 minutes, I had to turn the lathe off um, wait for it to stop. Um, which, you know, you get impatient with that, don't you? So I started walking past it while still spinning it. And just using what York's regret is on the, 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 the towel, the, just go over the, the paint surface because it's sealed with sand or uh, lacquer. So I plan to give it all a coat, an R coat, you know. So this will take any wee we crispy bits it's sitting on it uh, from when it was drying. Just wipe that off. Robert Baltwood has got to go. Bye, Robert. Have a great day or a great evening. <laughs> Cheers for coming in anyway. Thank you. Yeah, I've got to remember where people are so I know what time it is. Yeah. I've changed changed my method on that. I just have every every time is morning. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Which it hey, is for me. <laughs> if you say morning anyway, no, nobody's going to know unless you, you know the person or more of the from. You're, you're going to be right somewhere in the world, aren't you? Exactly. Uh, right, we kiss the wax on that. The inside. I'll try and get a wee bit on that. Right, that'll do. Yeah. Paul, I've got a bit of advice for you. Yeah. You're too too clean and tidy. Not, not you, sorry. Yeah, but Paul Houghton. Um, oh. Too clean and tidy. If you make more mess, then the garage stops being half utility room. <laughs> Yeah, for you guys, it's uh, what uh, two o'clock, a little after two o'clock. Yeah. For me, it's nine o'clock in the morning. Uh, Chris Dodds just said it's eleven o'clock there in Australia p.m. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it, this really is an international community that we've developed. <clears throat> it's near it, bad time for some of them. It doesn't matter for Chris because Chris never sleeps anyway. That's about true. Okay, I'm just going to grab that piece from outside to see if it, it's straight off, Annie, and uh, we'll see what it's sitting like. Uh -huh. Right, I just grabbed it there. It has a couple of wet spots here. I don't know where I got these drops from, so I'll probably do that again. Uh, it's spoiled that you can see that. Yeah, I don't know where they come from, but obviously, I know what it was the bubbles. See if you have any bubbles sitting on the surface, try and get them off before it uh, dries out. Uh, yeah, the, it'll pop and yeah, no it'll pop. That's what that's been. So, mm -hmm. there's another thing to look out for. Uh, you can see that's dried off quite, quite well in an hour. So if you if you left it at two hours, you could uh, work on the piece. So what I'll do with it, I'll, I'll turn that off again and redo it and uh, try not to get any bubbles. I just wanted to show you uh, the process of 
putting the, the ink in the, the tray and dipping it in and uh, things to look out for, you know. So what, by, what I would like to try is a slight curve on the rim. So you end up with a curved rim. Yeah. Um, but I think you need to be a little bit careful you didn't get too much of a curve or it might not, might not take the paint properly. You see, I, I'm rubbing that with a piece of tar and it's doing no harm to it. It's totally dried, bar those couple of wee spots. But that, that has ruined it, those bubbles. That's what that's been, the bubbles. Uh, that's the first time that's happened to me. <laughs> Scott says, that reminds me of the 70s. <laughs> it does, it does. So there it's you are, guys. There's uh, today's project. And I think it turned out quite well. Yeah. Do you happen to remember the colors you used on that one? Uh, red, orange, yellow, and blue. Okay. Just they came out blue. great. Yeah. You put they... the blue in there, and you can see the yellow and the orange streaks and the red. Uh, yeah, that combination came out really good. And you can see the wood in the background as well. So right. that's why I painted this one with a wee light like, coat of white paint acrylic paint I just sprayed it on right uh, lately to cover that to see what uh, uh, it does for the background of that because if if your piece was really heavy figured you would see the figure through that so if you didn't want that you would go down this route mm -hmm. so depending on what colors you were going to use you could use any color for the background you know you could use yellow or white or gray depending on what um, colors you're going to put on it. Because I, I think it would just... I think it would just... Background, uh, um, in one of the colors you're going to put into the mix, then uh -huh. those air bubbles wouldn't hurt, would they? Yeah, well... Because it would still it, be a color. It's really down to how uh, much you move the paint around, guys, and and where the colors end up. You know, so there's today's project, and I think I'll enter that into the hashtag <laughs> uh, wall piece. Wall art, yeah. Wall art. <laughs> it's not what it was supposed to be, but that's what it yeah. ended up being. <laughs> so, uh, I'll take that wee food off later and get a couple of coats of lacquer over in that and get a couple of photographs up of, of it. But you can see uh, there is lacquer on that and uh, a bit of shine off it. Uh, so thanks very much for coming over and watching, guys. Really appreciate you taking the time on your busy Monday afternoon. And guys, Worms, thank you for coming in. You're welcome. So, uh, thank you for showing us another technique we can play with. So, absolutely. I'll say cheerio, guys. On. Say cheerio, and we'll we'll call it a quit. Cheers, cheerio. Bye bye, bye guys. <laughs>